We just need to keep working hard instead of we got the AC working. You can tell it's cooler in here, also it's cooler outside. And the more deliberate we are, the, the easier it will be for us to get this done. So just please be deliberate, all right? Any questions? Awesome, you guys are great. Let's get in there and do a ideal cheer. Woo! One, two, three, ideal! So right now, we are just getting ready to paint up here. You can see, if you look up here, I started a little bit on it. Um, so we just installed all the hardware into it so it's ready to go. So today, we're actually doing a lot of different things. Uh, since it's the last week, we're starting to do the last uh, checklist, I like to say. There's a lot of different tasks that we have going on today, um, one of which is gonna be uh, painting the closet uh, interior. Um, the different shelves and the different closet bars that are in there. Um, my companions, as I'll be working on that, you'll see in there, are starting to work on putting in the pocket door right there and working on the rest of the baseboard and the trim. But for today, we're gonna be focusing mostly on the painting side of things. Now we just have to beautify it. And so, it's a pretty simple process. Everybody's done it a time or two in their life before. You just wax on, wax off. Paint the fence. It's a little tedious, but there is a specific method to it that you want to follow as so you go along. Take a look. Yeah, go ahead. Said method is uh, pretty simple. Um, for the closet, you just want to make sure that there's a nice, even coat all along it. Um, make sure that there's no bumps in the paint so when it dries, it doesn't obviously show through. So it's a little a little tedious, a little slow. Like for example, you'll see on the bull nose right there, there's a little bit of a bump right there. Just try to smooth that out a little bit so I can come back later and not have that bump get in my way to try to finish out the bull nose. I like painting bull nose partly because of the fact that the bull nose particle board that we're working with right here just absorbs the paint. It eats it and it becomes one with it. And it's really cool. Um, a lot of other things um, like metal, steel, um, different types of hard wood, it's really hard to paint because of the fact that they don't soak in the paint. And so a lot of times you get a lot of runs, coats will be uneven regardless of what you do, and just stuff like that. So it's really fun to work with stuff like this. It's kind of relaxing because you don't have to put too much thought into it. Just got to make sure that the coats are nice and even on the back. It's nice because of the fact that this is the same paint color as um, the wall. So even if you touch the wall a little bit, you can touch it up. You don't have to put painter's tape. So it works out nice. Well, I can tell you this much, the person who's gonna buy it is gonna notice every single fault in it because of the fact that it's gonna be theirs. And who likes to buy something that they immediately regret the uh the purchase because of the fact that they see like stuff that they didn't see when they first walked through because i i've been in positions like that not necessarily with houses but like with other things in general and i don't want to be that person to, to put this together and then have the said buyer go through it and just be utter just ultimately disappointed with their purchase i want to make sure whoever buys this house and whoever takes the time to live in it is safe knowing that the people that put it together put their their best effort into it. 
So every single detail, no matter how small it matters. Yep. Gonna have said it better myself. Right now I'm just painting the, uh, the piece where the bar sets in. This one is fun to work with just because the angles you have. This one takes a little bit more time to do, right? But uh, ultimately when it comes down to it, once you finish it, you'll be grateful for the amount of time that you put in because it really just kind of ties it all together. And when you put in the right amount of time, it does make a difference. Yep. There is a point where you have to be careful that you don't invest too much time on something and just kind of freak out and make sure that it's like absolutely perfect because some cases, unfortunately, regardless of what you do, there'll always be things that kind of stick out about something. And so when you're sitting there trying to fix every possible thing, not only are you wasting time, but you're also wasting mental energy that you could be spending on other things, making other things efficiently. And so this is one of those things where, um, I feel like I have the, the right amount on it. Probably better patterns that I could put on it, but for the most part, I mean, that's, that's paint for you. You just lather it on, and it looks good. One thing that I've always wondered about services like these, typically you use rollers for a large, um, broader spectrums of, of painting, whether that be walls on the inside or outside a roof, um, and you use paint brushes for the tight little corners, but this one i wonder what the texture would be if we use a roller so that's what we're going to do right now we're going to show the difference in textures with just paint brushing and the difference in textures and rolling so we'll go grab those materials right now be right back we'll put that in there to soak fully let's go grab a roller A little tiny one so we're not going to get the big boys for this but the tiny ones will do actually smooth the semi smooth surfaces let's take one of these for the top and the bottom so we're going to start with the baby roller just for those tighter surfaces that we'll be getting to. So way quicker, and you can tell where the texture is different from the two. Is it just a smoother, better, more evenly applied, or what are you seeing? So the coat wants to sit on a lot better and it's evenly applied, which is very important because on here, you probably can't notice without a light. Just let me get mine. You'll see that there's little lines from the paintbrush as it goes down. Comparatively to over there, you have a nice even texture all the way down where you don't really see any lines. You just see the paint. And so both works ultimately but there are situations where you want to use a brush over a roller and a roller over a brush. In your point of view or in your opinion here, uh, what do you feel is uh, the preference? I feel like I'm going to use the roller now because it's more effective when it comes to the, uh, the overall surface. It's faster to do it and it comes with a nicer uh, texture to it, which is very nice. Ties everything together. So let's go over the paintbrush surface to add apply that texture. I'm not gonna be able to get in that corner with this thing, but with the majority of it. Grab some more. It's like every tool has its its time to shine and the paintbrush is in those tight little corners, those tight little uh, um, spaces that you need to get to. Also, one thing that is really good with the paintbrush is you're able to cut surfaces where there is a corner, but each corner or each wall, oh, I 
I was going to say something there. Each corner and each wall. What? So each wall and each corner. Uh, <laughs> part we got the things that we need to with the roller so now we're going to go switch back to the paintbrush it's still soaking outside so it's kind of like a toothbrush that you leave out after using it without washing it off or whatever the bristles start to get super hard and when you try to go apply it to any surface you start starts rubbing up against it rather than just smoothly going across it and so that's very important for this part of the build because those lines will start to show on anything that you rub the brush on, whether that be the walls, closet, wherever it is. And so it's just easier to make sure that every after every use that you soak it, you clean it the best you can. There's obviously going to be little paint marks there that are still there. But for the most part, you just want to make sure that it's nice and smooth so that the application of it will be nice and smooth. So now we're just doing touch-ups right now, looking for any spots that I may have missed, any corners that didn't get painted like this one up here. So we got the majority of it nice and painted. Um, we touched up on a lot of the corners, a lot of the lines that we're showing through. So um, we should be able to just start to let this thing dry, put back on the rod and move on to the next process. See how it dries, if there's anything else that we need to touch up, just run a paintbrush through it. Touch it right up. Cool. I'm gonna go clean up. And so one of the, the common mistakes that is made during the last couple of weeks of the build is the rush. Because there are deadlines, there are quotas to meet um, a lot of people will start to kind of put the gas on and sometimes make little small mistakes here and there. But I've seen in many, many houses, whether it be track homes, custom homes, whatever they be, um, where there are these small little mistakes that do ultimately matter. So one thing that me and my group are trying to do is try to, we're trying to be quick, but also at the same time, we're, we're trying to be deliberate with our, um, our work. We're trying to be very, um, accurate and also at the same time very efficient as well to be able to make sure that we don't have any of those common mistakes in our home but also that we do meet that deadline it's very important that we have both speed and accuracy otherwise uh, you either don't meet the quota or it looks terrible you want to meet right in between there 